surely the Pope. This is a huge story, isn't it? Well, the Pope, the Pope sort of woke up on Monday and thought, oh, God, I've got to go to work. And, uh, <laughs> Well, in fact, he doesn't have to be at work till Sunday. <laughs> that's not true, because the week that's in it, I think he had to write a million Valentine's cards to all the nuns. <laughs> God was not happy at all about this, was he? No, did you see the lightning bolt? So this is a picture of the Vatican 12 hours after the Pope resigned. If the church had any sense, they would have a news story after that saying there was a nun in there doing some paperwork and she's pregnant now. <laughs> <laughs> Why do the popes always start old? Well, they're talking about the Ghanaian Cardinal Peter Turkson being the, uh, the next pope. Oh. That's him with Chris Hume there. He's, uh, you can see Chris Hume's asking him to take a few points for him. <laughs> <laughs> what I want to know is, if we're going to have a black pope, when are we going to have a black queen? <laughs> No, no talk of a black queen, is keep, there? Keep an eye on Kate Middleton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's her. Sorry, I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm saying like, maybe she, maybe her baby is going to be black because it's probably not. <laughs> <laughs> the queen's not elected, is it? <laughs> now that's a serious answer. <laughs> That's what makes it weird that people choose the Pope. Shouldn't it be someone who something magical has happened to? You know, like you got Jesus, like he was the guy because you know you knew. <laughs> no, I'm just saying you know that he was chosen by God because he he done you know he done <laughs> magic things. It should well, you know. So you think what Paul Daniels? Who are you? <laughs> no, no, Let's have a look and see if the Pope's up there. Yes, the Pope's resigned. Yes, the Pope has resigned. He's going to be difficult to replace. Where are we going to find another paedophile apologist who's also a Nazi? <laughs> OK. Can I just do a little disclaimer? Can we just make sure we don't put the bit about me talking about she might have a black baby? <laughs> Scared of the royal family. Are you genuinely scared of the royal family? Just, I'm just scared that they can kill you, they can organise. <laughs> Once a decade, they do one of their own. They don't, <laughs> they don't go outside the family. If Kate Middleton has a white baby, they'll just ignore you. If she has a black baby, they'll have their own problems to deal with. Yeah. <laughs> 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 The main worry is not if it's black, it's whether yeah. it's ginger. That's <laughs> the main worry. <laughs> That's the main worry. <laughs> I feel much better now, because, like, more of us have said stuff now, so at least... <laughs> Sean, Jamelia, Paul, what else are the nation be talking about? Well, there's just been this business in North Korea with their successful nuclear test. They're trying to build a, a nuclear warhead small enough to go on a, on a missile, basically. Okay. So they miniaturised it. It has a range of 1,000 kilometres. Uh, so it could hit Japan or China, but not the US or UK. So if you're watching North Korea, f*** you. <laughs> um, now, if you had access to a nuclear weapon, John, w what would you bomb? I don't think I'd bomb anyone, cos then the threat's gone, I'd just carry it round with me. <laughs> I'm going to check in on the news now. News. Um, <laughs> Christian, do you think North Korea are a serious threat or are they just are they laughable? Well, um, who knows? They've got nuclear weapons and they are ruled by uh, a sort of a slightly crazy guy who's got being a psychopath running in the family. Um, <laughs> so. You might say they're a threat. On the other hand, the only people who've used nuclear weapons are the United States. Unusual for a newsreader, because that sounds there's a bit of bias in there. No. You did say he's a psychopath, his dad. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't say that on Channel 4 News, you go, and we've news uh, about the nuclear test in North Korea from King Jong-un, whose dad we all know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you would not do that on the news, no. would you? I'm not on the news. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, that's going to turn out bad. Not, Run for your life! <laughs> <laughs> OK, we were talking about North Korea. I can tell you that's not one of the most talked about things this week. But North Korea has caused outrage after carrying out nuclear weapons tests. The test was executed perfectly, as were all the people who criticised it. <laughs>
Johnson, what else have the nation been talking about this week? Oh, it's, it's been Valentine's Day, hasn't it? I imagine people are talking about love and all that stuff. Who did now, you, who did you like... send a Valentine to? I didn't. No, I sort of... I view Valentine's Day like the Polish food aisle of a supermarket. <laughs> I don't really know what it's for, but I like to look at it. <laughs> Ooh! <laughs> I've been thinking, because um, they've been talking about different gifts you can give people on Valentine's Day, and the worst gift, apparently, is petrol station flowers. But then how do you know they're petrol station flowers? I mean, you can't actually... T unless, of course, they've all been mangled through that night hatch. <laughs> but also, it gets a bad press, the petrol station flowers, because if you buy flowers in a florist, there's no petrol. <laughs> <laughs> or packets of Maltesers or anything. <laughs> so, actually, I would rather receive petrol station flowers from someone because then I would know that I had a discerning lover who shopped at flexible shops. I think it's just too much pressure and it's for uninventive people. Everyone gives red roses and chocolates. It's like, think of something yourself, like, do something a little bit more creative. Like, to yeah, me, I tried just that. so... I oh, tried that, but it backfired. Yeah, cos it's what rubbish. Did you, what did you try, Sean? I made a card, made a card for my uh, wife's stroke girlfriend, Lodger, and... <laughs> <laughs> I made it myself and she didn't right. like it. That's sweet, though. No, that's... Yeah, but I do, so what it is, I, I cut a picture of a heart out of a cigarette packet. <laughs> Creative. <laughs> Would you describe yourself as a tech addict, yes or no? Well, I don't feel I have to answer that question, and I'm shutting your butt down. <laughs> <laughs> I've asked that question before, and I don't see we've got a right to talk about. I've said all I want to say on that subject. <laughs> But do you think about it? But, you, you, but do you think that I'm not your? Would you describe I'm not yourself? your slave, and you're not my master. <laughs> would you describe yourself? <laughs> no, but would you describe yourself? 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 Would you describe would you, are you obsessed by technology? I, I, I would have said I was a tech addict. I've been a tech addict all my life, but I'm now getting to this point where uh, everyone is a tech addict and I'm finding it slightly repellent. My feeling is that we've lost what I call shite talk, which is where ten years ago an entire mm. evening of conversation could be based around an easily verifiable untrue fact. <laughs> you know, somebody like, do you remember when Wesley Snipes was in Grange Hill? <laughs> <laughs> I think I do. <laughs> I was just like, eh, I'm not true. Meh. Hashtag, I'm so lonely. Meh. What annoys me is I think people have lost is just the ability to look out of a window on a train. People can't, they sit there looking at old text messages, conversations you've had in the past, because you can't bear to think for a second. Like old people didn't do they didn't get on a bus with a shoebox full of letters. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's all well and good with the fancy things, but to be honest, I got a new Hoover recently with a spectacularly fast cable recoil on it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And because all, all of that sort of technology just exists in the realm of wizardry, but then you put your foot on this, yoink, and you're like, <laughs> future, I like it. I do aspire to once being uh, trapped somewhere with just the Hoover, and then I'd get the plug end and I'd fire it up like that, <laughs> and then just hit the button, hold on to it, and I'd... <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's interesting the why they invented that, was that somebody needed, someone who was hoovering, needed to get out of there fast. <laughs> There's a situation where they're hoovering, and they think, oh, I better get out of here. <laughs> Bang! <laughs> <laughs> We're gone.